can you hear me? Yes, okay, hi, my name is Ai Wee, I and we, not you and me. So today I'm gonna to talk about early stage growth um, playbook, what we have done at Love With Food to help us grow. So a little bit history uh, background about Love With Food. We are a snack subscription business that sends you organic snacks, all natural snacks to your door for $10 a month. Everything is pretty healthy and tastes super yummy. And at the same time, we work with a lot of brands, big brands, small brands like Nestle, General Mills, all the way down to smaller brands like a goat's milk farm in uh, Vermont. So a lot of brands work with us because we're not only a great marketing platform, we also collect product intelligence data on their behalf. So a little bit history about the company. We are a two and a half years old company and uh, we're part of the 500 uh, startup portfolio. As of today, our team has 13 people and last year our revenue was $2 million. So a lot of people ask me that, how is it possible that f uh, in the first two years we only raised $650,000 and how did we turn that into a $2 million business in two years? So today I'm gonna to talk to you about how uh, we've done it, the scrappy ways that we've done it with very little money. So, Napoleon, everybody knows Napoleon. He once said, war is 90% information. So before you do any testing, before you do any um, growth analytics, you have to make sure that you have all these tools in place to help you measure whether what you're testing is growing. So for us, in our company, we use Google Analytics, we use Mixpanel, and Crazy Egg. Only three tools. If you have anything more than three, when you mesh all the data together, it's gonna to be very complicated. So make your life easy, just implement three. So Napoleon said, 90% of war is uh, information. I say 95% of war is server-side information. So what is server-side information? For Google Analytics and Mixpanel, it's very easy to just drop JavaScript and get the JavaScript to produce magic um, information and produce a very nice dashboard. But that might not be as accurate. Server-side information is when someone purchased something, we will immediately ping that information to Google, immediately ping that information to Mixpanel. And that is the most accurate information that you should send to your analytics tools. So always make sure that you have engineers to implement um, API calls in the back end. Do not just depend on JavaScript. And then in the very beginning, we didn't know what to test. And we didn't know if the platform to test setup was set up correctly. So what we did was we just did some very simple tests. Start with testing the image on the home page, test with the uh, messaging uh, on the home page. And once you get your hands dirty, your feet wet, you're ready to do some user testing. So I'm gonna show you a uh, video of one of our user testing our website. So going to step three, um, I have searched in Google and ended up here. And one thing I'd wanna do on the site, well, I'd wanna see what um, kind of snacks they have. Uh, you know, I'd be interested in the different types. So I guess I'm gonna go to learn more and see if um, they tell me. So this is a lot of subscription membership. Um, Review the snacks you try. No, nothing here about the kind of snacks you get. Okay, so let's go back up here to this. I'm hoping that there's a notch up here snack box. Looks like it might be uh, promising in terms of telling me what you have. Box, let's see. Eight new snacks a month. Um, always organic, free shipping, cancel anytime. Okay, uh, here we go. What goes inside our boxes? Um, almost didn't notice that there was more to this website. So this is just the general quality of the food. You order, hmm. No, that didn't give me the information I wanted. So maybe, I don't know, just choose, give me any more, order for myself, order as a gift. Huh, um, it doesn't look like it. I just wanna know what snacks you send or, or have some confirmation that they're random. Um, hmm, shop, maybe? Uh, now I'm just guessing at this point. Okay, this is totally different. Um, am I on the same site? Yes, okay. Um, I'm now confused about the purpose of this company because uh, it looks like a snack subscription site and here they're selling individual snacks and that wasn't at all clear from the first page. But it looks like you could also buy boxes individually, which is also strange. Um, huh, okay, 
Uh, so now I'm just more confused and I still don't know what's in the boxes. Um, okay, so it says a curated box. I don't know what that means. Uh, okay, frequently asked questions, maybe? Count questions, deluxe box. General membership, how many items come in it? Products, um, okay, maybe it's under general membership. Uh, month plan, nothing, okay. Um, maybe how it works. Yeah, I don't want to check out a video. I just want you to tell me in text. That's, um, okay, so seven minutes in and I still don't know what kind of snacks they're going to send me. Um, like I want the products list uh, and I still don't quite understand how they pick them. So that wasn't terribly successful. Okay, you get the point. This is the reason why I have a bottle of whiskey at work. <laughs> Seven minutes later, she still doesn't know how to find out what snacks she receives at home. As a founder, it's very heart-wrenching and heartbreaking to watch this. Um, so what we did was we you know, dissected the, the steps that she took. She went from the home page click learn more, hoping that she can learn more what she gets in the box, and then didn't give her the answer, she went to about. And then no answer, went to click on snack box, still no answer. And click on choose, maybe there is some answer there, nope, she went to shop, and then she asked herself, oh no, am I still on the same website? This is the part I start drinking. <laughs> okay. And then she went to about page again, still didn't find the answer, went to FAQ, and then went to general membership questions, click on how it works. At this point, it's 10 clicks later, and I'm beginning to chuck my whiskey. And this is the final end result. It's very frustrating and very embarrassing for me as a founder. So what do we do? So what do we learn from this video? So we decided, okay, if our homepage is not informational enough, maybe we'll come up with another version. So this is version eight. Uh, this is our homepage. It says discover new organic or natural snacks delivered to your door. If you want, you click more, it's $10. If you click more, it takes you to the about page. So after drinking tons of whiskey, we decided to come up with version B. Version B, as you can see, is super long, super cluttered. It answers every freaking question out there, okay? Question, like we have, we added more explanation that you'll get five to eight surprise snacks in the box. And then instead of linking the uh, call to action to about, we link you directly to the pricing page because we want to shorten the funnel. And a lot of people always ask, what are in your past boxes? So we showed pictures of past boxes with examples. And we create urgency, the countdown, and then how it works all on one page, and also, of course, testimonials from our customers. So which one do you think won, uh, generated more revenue for us? Who says A? Who says B? OK, I'm going to show you the results. As you can see, for A, version A still generates more revenue than version B. Version B is the one that answers every freaking question out there, but we still, we lost revenue with version B. And with version B, our goal is hopefully people will not go to the about page because version B already has all the information you need. There's really no need to go to version B. But our data shows that people are still going to the about page, actually 28% higher than uh, the original version B. So our test so, what did we learn? We learned that a shorter funnel doesn't mean it translates to higher revenue. And we learned that user feedback provides great ways to give us ideas to test. But user feedback, users doesn't mean they know what they want. They are not always right. And this, the data we've collected has already proven that, you know, users are not always right. So, we went back to version 8. Next thing, how do we collect user feedback? So for us, there are two groups of user. Um, the one on the left, I call it the why you know love with food, is the people who do, are not familiar with love with food at all. The one on the right, uh, lots of love, love with food, they, those are our current customers. 
So for people who are never familiar with Love with Food, we use Kualaru to get feedback. You've heard about Kualaru this morning. We use user testing to produce that video you've seen. And we also go to Starbucks and ask people what they thought about the website. And all this is less than $200. You can actually get a lot of data points to test for less than $200. And then, of course, we ask our current customers what are the ways that we can improve, what are the things that we can optimize. And last but not least, don't forget the team. You know, asking team and our current users, yeah, it's free data, free uh, feedback for, for give, to give you ideas what to test. So ask yourself who on your team has the closest contact to customers. For my company, the team is the, our customer happiness team. So customer service is the one department that they are the eyes and ears of the company. So me as a CEO, I choose to sit with that team. So I just I sit literally next to all the customer service people so that whenever people call and ask questions, I know exactly what problems people have. And I have weekly meeting with the customer service team to understand what are the occurring, recurring problems that we face. And I always ask them, if you can fix one thing, just one thing, what would it be? So being a scrappy startup, we can't afford a product person. What I did was I turned our customer service team into a product, into a part-time product team. And I try to make it fun for them. And it's fun for them because you know, answering customer support every day is not the most fun thing to do. So I give them a challenge. If you can fix one thing, what, what would it be? So, I ask them if the version, whatever suggestion you come up with wins, what prize would you like? You know, of course, some of them wanted pedicure, medicure, massage, or pool party. So it encourages them um, to, to create um, something that really will fix the problem that they face every day. So one of the problems that they face every day is the free trial page. So we have a free trial page where you can sign up for your first box for free. This is the current version. And what the customer support team tells me that this page has created a lot of issues on our ticketing system and phone calls because people are not sure, one, what they're getting in the box, and two, um, if they can cancel any time. So I gave them a project. I say, fine, I give, I'm giving you two weeks to fix this page. I want you to come up with a new version based on what you hear from the customers. But before you do that, I need you to take this page to go ask five strangers two questions. One, after giving you two minutes to look at the page, do you know what we do? And the, last, the second question is, would you buy a Love With Food box? If not, why not? So two weeks later, they came out with this version. They did all the copywriting. OK, they are not product people. They are just customer service people. They did all the copywriting. And we added more information to help explain what we do so that you know, they get less customer service phone call. And we create urgency. Also photos of our past customers who are happy getting the box and an unboxing video by a customer on YouTube. So let me ask you again, who thinks A won? And who say B? OK. As you can see, B1, B increased our revenue by 53%. And that page was not done by a product person. It was done by the customer support team. Um, I think the product people in this page is going to stone me to death after this. <laughs> so we're just trying to be scrappy here. So, if the customer support team has so many ideas, I was thinking, why don't I just open it up to the whole entire team? What ideas do they have in terms of growth? Because you know, everybody lives and breathes the brand every day. Everyone has really good ideas. So for every quarter, I will ask the team, take one day off to just think about growth. Stop coding, stop answering phone calls, stop doing social media. I just want you to spend one day, eight hours in that day, to give me three ideas on growth. So we have a lot of really good ideas. Some are weird, like bumper stickers. Um, Gluten-free box, you know, target the brides, target mom, create a new funnel, you know, partner with food banks, partnering with um, um, referral bloggers. 
So we have a lot of ideas. So now my job is to sieve out the easy to implement ideas and pick one metric that we want to improve on. So even though I showed you the example where the shorter funnel didn't work for us, that doesn't mean that we should stop testing. Um, the rule for us is always be testing because you never know which next test will be the best, will produce the best result. And rule number two is we always just pick one metric to improve. The metric can be maybe we just want to get people to sign up more free trial or get people to tell their friends. So just pick one. And then the easiest is it's always to pick the lowest hanging fruit, whether it's a copy change, a button change, or um, you know, lowest hanging fruit is the easiest things to test. And that was how we did growth in a very scrappy way. Thank you.